and welcome back to the channel Capsule Alendes here for another episode of the Alpha Chronicle where we will be continuing to explore the pro and cons of the different weapon types in EVE Ecos. That's the mini series I started last week with the lasers, one of my all time favorite weapons and today we are going to look at cannon as you can deduce from the ship in my anger um, if you if you were a big fan of the battlestar galactica reboot that's the 2003 uh, series that went on on television and it's used shell-based artillery fire this is basically the weapon type that will enable you to replicate that kind of feel um, and so you will be you will be at home using cannons and then, and if that's the the way you enjoyed it there you go this is what you should look for in eve ecos two small items that um, i need to touch base and that i i missed or hide in the in the previous video cannons uh, like all other weapons which are turrets um, you need to understand a bit more about maybe how it operates so i'm gonna go into the market and take um, a good old medium strike oops no strike cannon um basically threaded weapon the way they apply the damage is based on the difference in between the angular velocity um, or the orbital speed of your target compared to the weapon intrinsic tracking speed in an oversimplified way, if your tracking speed exceeds the orbital velocity or the angular velocity of your target, then you will be applying damage in full. If your tracking speed is below that threshold, you will be less effective or not even hitting your target at all. And so this is really important to, um, to understand because the higher the tracking speed, of course, the easiest it will be for you to hit fast moving targets circling around you in combat and uh, the way missiles and drone operate is slightly different so this is really important to understand for threats remember tracking speed versus angular velocity and that is really the key point in there meaning a ship that is flying straight in a straight line towards you in any engagement is a sitting duck you will be able to hit him with full strength because basically it has no angular velocity whereas once it starts orbiting and circling around you this is where uh, the mess usually starts and where you better have uh, either very good tracking speed or some uh, support uh, mid slots uh, modules like webifier or web uh, scramblers if um, you are facing micro warp drive uh, vessels okay so that's that's the way turret weapon operate the second elements which I, I described a bit in, in the previous video but not so explicitly is the alpha damage and as you can see from the, the description of the, the, the weapon here um, you you have for each weapon a DPS, a damage per second. That represents the average amount of damage you will be dealing to your target per second. Very straightforward, very easy to understand for each of us. What is more important is the way the damage will be dealt and that is bound to the weapon activation time. And so basically the lowest the activation times mean the faster the, the damage will be applied to a target so you, you will still be applying let's say a 20 dps but if you fire your weapon every two seconds it means that 40 dps more or less will be applied every two seconds to your target whereas if you have a very long activation time it means that each time you will fire a volley of your weapon you will do massive damage and if i take the example here we have um 12 seconds more or less activation time and a 20 dps that would be uh, a 240 um, a damage applied for each single volley so slow firing but hit like a trunk when it uh, it fires if it hits of course uh, in there and that is really 
the way alpha damage is uh, applied. Why is it called alpha damage? Because it is, it, it will be the opening strike in any engagement. Okay, you will be firing your weapons and you will be applying a full volley before the activation time start to reboot and uh, start to be taken into account. So if you have a very high uh, alpha damage, it means that you can basically obliterate the target before it has a chance to um, retaliate. The, the corollary to, to that, of course, is that if you miss, you will be sitting there while your weapon activation times reset again and you fire another volley and we will come to that later on. So remember alpha damage, oversimplify it again, you take the DPS and you multiply by the activation times and that is the damage more or less you would do from a, a single volley. And, and so you can compare weapons based on that and see who has the highest uh, alphas in the, in the, in the game. That being said, now let's uh, resume our discussion about the, um, the the cannons. And so, like all of the other turreted weapons, uh, the, the the rail guns and the lasers, the cannons came in two types. You have the the, the short range, high DPS auto cannons that is fit for broader bills, where you will be orbiting at, at very close range and doing. Um, much more damage but also suffering more because you will be in the middle of the enemy fleet and then you have um, the slightly lower dps but longer range weapon which are the, the strike cannons uh, in that um, in that context so two types short range high dps longer range lower dps uh, in there when you look at the, um, the pros and cons one of the things I do like about the uh, strike cannon is the damage profile, which is um, highly balanced. It, it's slightly less than the missiles, where you have all four damage types that are going to be applied on the um, on the enemies. But anyway, here you still have thermal, you still have kinetics, and you still have the explosive damage. And when you look at the distribution, thermal will be mainly effective against shield whereas kinetic and explosive will be shredding armor to pieces. So basically cannons will be sort of okay-ish um, against, against shield, most likely a bit on the, on the lower hand, but once you reach uh, armor, that will be um, another story altogether and you will be doing massive damage because the, the, the damage type is really focusing on uh, uh, that. Second element, which is um, uh, on the advantage of cannon, is the tracking speed. So tracking speed, of course, you need to be comparing same class of weapon across the, the different types. But basically, you 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 lower than the, um, the rail guns, which which have the, the highest, but still higher than the lasers, and certainly higher than the decomposers, which will be uh, most likely the last weapon type that I'm I will be talking about in a couple of um, of episodes. So tracking speed is an in between. You you're not the worst. You're not the best. You're you're in the middle of the of the class uh, in there, but still it is decent. The other part is the actual way in terms of range management that cannons operate. When you look at lasers and hail guns, you will have potentially a, a slightly better optimal range, but the accuracy fall off will be quite steep. And for turreted weapon, if you, if you remember correctly how it works, basically up to the optimal range, you're applying full damage in between optimal range plus one accuracy fall off uh, or when you reach that, that uh, distance, you are at 50% effectiveness and once you reach optimal range plus two accuracy fall off, you are at zero uh, effectiveness. And so basically you are not able to hit your target. So lasers and Helgens, they have a, a fairly decent optimal range, but a very steep accuracy fall off. So it means that you will be losing very rapidly your your weapon uh, ability to deal damage whereas for the the strike cannon as you can see here for my my, my medium strike cannon i have a, a, a 19 kilometers optimal range which will be a bit less than what the lasers and um, and, and hail guns would have but i have an accuracy fall of of 17.5 kilometers which is humongous so it means that um, this 
the slope in terms of accuracy fall off is very gentle and you will reach much longer range also with of course less effectiveness than what you can get with the other weapon types so um, the, the real guns and lasers and you can see here that i'm i'm nearly at um 37 uh, kilometers range and i'm still 50 percent effective and i can still add uh, 17 kilometers to that to uh, to arrive to my my maximal range so that is something which is um, um to be noted and that will be particularly useful if you want to to do some uh, range kiting um, uh, build the other point which is important and you see i'm, I'm kind of um, looking at it but i don't find it is there is no capacity draw for that weapon so it means every time you fire it's free you don't need to use your, your capacitor to, to to fire the weapon like you have on the hail guns and the lasers which are, are very uh, capacitor hungry so in terms of capacitor management that will be um, very easy to handle because basically even if you're uh, completely drained your weapon will still be able to fire so pros four points balanced damage profile average tracking speed good range and hinge distribution and no capacitor draw of course um, no weapon is ever perfect so in terms of uh, cons what you will you will see here is that um, we have an activation time of nearly 12 seconds so that, that's that's um, a very huge and so it means that even though you will have a very strong alpha damage the, the, the cannons if they're the highest alpha damage in the in, in the game um, because of that high activation time if you miss your target it means you will be severely punished for that okay and just as a comparison so we are looking at a 12 second activation times beam lasers which which is the on par version uh, in the lasers family they have a six second activation times where and the and the, the, the rail guns uh, the rifle rail guns they have a five second activation time so you see the the slightly um, a difference you have and of course um, that difference amplifies as you move from small to medium to large and the large cannon have nearly a 20 22 seconds uh, activation time so they will have do they will hit like a trunk as every volley but um, you, you're making like two or three volley per minute and which is insanely slow for a weapon damage application a lot of things can happen in 20 seconds and your enemy can can close in quite um quite uh, easily um the the second element which is also slightly uh, of a con is because of the accuracy fall off and the the, um, the reduced optimal range basically you will never be applying the full dps it's a bit akin with the the, the missile which will be uh, m most likely um, the next one or, or maybe uh, i will do rifle uh, let's see but um because you will be usually firing in between optimal and optimal plus accuracy fall off you will uh, not necessarily be in a very good position to apply full dps but uh, that's the price to pay to get the uh, the extra range and uh, the gentle slope uh, there it doesn't mean that you will lose a lot it all depends on on where you stand but um, you will be maybe applying 80 70 percent of your dps on average all depends on where you stand uh, compared to uh, your target and that's it for the, the the pro and cons and so now we can take a look at actually what ship you can fly with um if you want to to equip cannon and um of course the only faction which is using cannon is the minmata and minmata are basically either cannon driven or missile driven and we'll do as we did for the laser so we'll go from the frigate destroyers and cruiser size ship to see exactly what you can do and what are the different um, um ships that you can yeah, that you can fly so looking at the frigates frigate size you get on um 
uh, tech level uh, uh, two, your slasher, which will be one of the uh, uh, first frigate that you can, uh, that, that you can fly. But to be honest, the slasher I would simply pass because um, the rifter, which is uh, the one just beside it, is basically uh, much better. And why is it much better? Because it has a higher um, a, a bonus to the cannon damage. You see that for each frigate cannon bonus, you get a 7.5 um, damage bonus, whereas your standard slasher will basically give you only a 5%. So better DPS on the on the rifter compared to the, the slasher. Uh, the slasher just has this webby fire, but at tech level 2 you won't, you won't be engaging in any form of PvP whatsoever. So I don't think this is really um, useful. What you will get as well is a slight increase in your accuracy fall off, so you can get uh, 25%. So it means that this ship will be basically a brawler, you will equip the um, small auto cannons, you will get a very good DPS. A slightly longer um, uh, accuracy fall of meaning that your orbit will be fairly easy to uh, to manage. Tech two means two highs and three lows, uh, which will be um, fairly straightforward to uh, to to equip. So that will be, I would say, maybe the first uh, frigate that uh, I would recommend um, um, going. Tech level three, you can basically uh, skip. Because at tech level 3 you get the, the probe which is basically only um, a transport ship. It, it has no real use except moving stuff um, around. And then I would wait to get to the probe 2 which has a higher cargo hold capacity. Uh, in the, and the breacher is a missile boat so no use for cannon. On tech level 4 um, basically you have the slash 2 and the slash 2 is a very good and very strong um, frigate it's a it's a speed tank it can be used both in pvp and pve situation you get uh, very good bonuses in terms of uh, webify capacitor need and disruptor capacitor need meaning that for pvp situation you will be able to run those modules uh, more or less continuously it has some bonus to uh, afterburner, so you will be using uh, afterburner to do your speed tanking, meaning that you will not be affected by a warp scrambler, and you still get uh, some very nice damage to both your tracking, uh, very, very good uh, damage from your frigate command bonus on your on your cannon damage, and your tracking speed. Sorry. Uh, other than that. Of course, uh, you are at tech level uh, four, so you start to have uh, engineering and weapon rigs, two of each. You have still two high slot, two medium, and two low slot in there. So that will be uh, a nice upgrade from your uh, standard rifter uh, at tech level two. The other ship that uh, you have access to is the Vigil. And the Vigil, to be honest, yes, it's a cannon ship, but it is something of a more of a, a dedicated um, role for that because as you can see here it basically gives a, a huge boost to the target painters and target painters are um, medium uh, modules that are basically increasing a target size making it uh, much more easy for both turret and missiles to hit so this is already sort of a support ship where you will be lighting up targets so that your your um, fleet uh, ships can actually hit them better and harder so this is something that you should consider if you're flying in fleet if you're you're flying solo yes you you can fit a, a target painter in in the mid slot but of course the, the usefulness will be will be less and then I would say go to a slasher too because when you look at what you will get from the, the um, advanced frigate bonus you cannot because you're an alpha clone so uh, you will not get anything in terms of um, of cannon but as you can still use the um, disruption bonus maybe there is a place for an, an alpha clone as a support uh, ship uh, with a vigil in a missile 
of a based fleet engagement. And the rest of the frigate you can basically um, ignore. Either they are relying on advanced skills or they are missile boats altogether, so they are not uh, really useful for um, auto cannons or, and cannons in, in general. If we move now to the destroyer, so in the destroyer you can start at tech level 3 and you will enjoy the thrasher line of, um, of ships. And basically the thrasher mimics the coercer. A coercer was the, the, the laser based destroyers, well the thrasher is the cannon version. And you, you will see exactly the same profile but oriented toward a different uh, weapon type. So you start with a level three, you don't have any um, internals. You have three high slots, so one more than, than your um, frigate counterpart, two medium and three lows. You get a very good bonus to a cannon optimal range. So basically you will start using more strike cannons uh, on the destroyers rather than the auto cannons that you would fit on the frigates very good uh, um, small cannon damage that you get from the uh, small cannon operation and you get also a nice boost in terms of flight velocity so the thrasher is most likely the most or the, the fastest uh, ship in terms of destroyers that you will find and fly uh, for an alpha clone so Tech level three, you can move to the thrasher. That, that's what I, I would do because I'm, I'm not very uh, frigate oriented. I'm more of a cruiser, battle cruiser, no battleship um, a, a pilot, but that is what I, I would do. And then at tech level four, you get the, the thrasher two, where you get uh, one more uh, a high slot and you start to get these uh, internal rigs, which will be uh, very useful to get some some additional improvement in terms of weapon damage, cap management, uh, targeting system. So that that's really really good. Do you get something else from the Thrasher to the Thrasher two? Um, yes, of course. If you look at the overall defense and so on, that will be um, a slight improvement. But you get otherwise the same flight velocity bonus and um, a reduce. Uh, small cannon uh, uh, damage because one you get one additional threat slot and two you get your uh, internal rigs the weapon rigs where you will uh, be able to get additional um, weapon damage if you so like to uh, to do it so tech level four you can move to the um, uh, slash two it has also tracking speed bonus which the the the, the, the slasher uh, the thrasher sorry uh, doesn't have but um, to be honest, I would wait for the tech level five, where you have either the guardian version, uh, and as, same comments as for the core. So the guardian is um, is really more of a, um, a support rules for your fleet. So if you're flying in a fleet of destroyers and and frigate, then putting the shield field modules will be very uh, useful. But means that you will use your um, weapon rigs to get some more resistance and your low slot where you get an additional ones that will be uh, more used toward tanking and getting um, shield hardener and, and, and shield booster rather than the usual weapon uh, type so that will not be DPS oriented but more support oriented and then you get the um, thrasher fleet issues which is where, of course, you will get the improvement in terms of uh, DPS. Still four low slot, you get an additional mid, three lows and two of the uh, internals. Uh, you get a slightly better cannon damage, uh, you're moving from four to a 7.5 and you still have uh, that um, bonus that comes with the fleet issues in terms of scan resolution and sensor strength which means that you will be locking on your target uh, much uh, faster and a nice addition to shield pay attention that compared to the um, the coercer where you had actually armor resistance in this case it's a shield bonus so it, it means that your shield hit points will be larger you will have a larger pool but your resistance will stay uh, at the same level until uh, or unless you put some hardener uh, in the equation. Okay, so 
that is for me what I, I would go for. I, I would move tech level three to the the, the the Thrasher, and then at tech level five, I would go for fleet issues, which will um, be a very significant boost, and I will uh, take those with strike cannons uh, to operate just at a safer distance and be able to cope um, with a range kiting build more than uh, a speed tanking and, and, and close brawler um, fit. As regards the, um, uh, the, the destroyers, uh, the, the min matter and, and the cannon based uh, ships, we are a bit more lucky because, to be honest, um, you can see that we have the stabber, which comes as a trainer version and as a standard version. I won't go into the detail of the trainer version. The trainer version were useful when those were the only ship that could get injured. So you could go into PvP and get your hull replaced uh, very, uh, very cheaply. Whereas now everything's fall under the new insurance system, and so you, there, there is basically no uh, no need for the trainer version anymore. And you can go directly for the stabber. The stabber you see here, you have drone tubes. So that's the difference in, uh, uh, with the destroyer and, fr and frigate lineup. You will be able to fit either. Um, a, a small or a medium drone, four high slot, two mids, four lows, and then two of the engineerings. Nothing in terms of actual bonus to uh, the cannon damage by itself, but you get a reduction in your cannon activation time, which basically is a DPS boost in a sense because you will be firing um, faster, and you get also some uh, medium cannon accuracy fall off. So um, you will be getting additional range from your cannon. The cruiser command bonus you will get you some additional uh, speed, so that will make the cruisers a very fast one compared to the other ship of its class. And this is the one I would fit personally with the strike cannon because you have the flight velocity. So it means that you can fairly easily keep at range. I don't think you will need any additional. Um, modules like an afterburner or MWD to actually keep uh, a distance the, the base flight velocity should be uh, uh, should be sufficient and with the, the four high slot means then that you can you can get um, um, a bit more DPS boost from the low slot and the uh, weapon rigs and so this is what I would do for for the the stabbers but this is still a ship that I, I need to explore a bit um, I didn't did a, a fitting guide yet i have the hull but i still need to uh, to look at it into a bit more detail i guess you can do a, a broader build from from it as well but for that matter i would rather go for the rupture and why would i do that it's simply because the rupture as you can see here get a five percent bonus to shield uh, per shield uh, operation level so 25 more shields meaning that you will be much more tankier than the the stabber you still have that four high slots two mid five lows so it's a bit of an improvement uh, compared to the, the the stabbers and then two of each of the uh, the internal but this is the ship that i would use for um a more broader build with auto cannons if you want to go that way then i would go for the the rupture you still get a very nice boost in terms of tracking speed and so that's why i would use also that ship for for more of a broader build because you will improve your your tracking speed and be able to um handle more the angular velocity because uh, as you're firing through it it's not only your enemy but it's basically the difference in between your your angular velocity that is uh, that is important so if you are orbiting too fast you may get uh, a penalty from uh, from that as well uh, so getting some additional tracking speed is uh, is good if you are going for a brawler build and then you get that uh, um, cannon activation time reduction which will be a nice uh, dps boost as well for um, the ship and so that's what i i would do is is really see the stabber more as the uh, long range kiting build run the rupture as um the brawler and and um, comparable to the moa i would say from the uh, um, caldari navy uh, uh, base 
So that, that would be the way I would um, handle the cruisers in uh, the cannon space in, in, the, in, in essence. So um, that's it for this, um, this video. Hope you enjoy the content and find it useful. If that's the case, well, hit the like button, help me get uh, more visibility and uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified of any upcoming video, ring the bell and you will get an instant notification every time I do upload new content on this channel. And in the meantime, fly safe and enjoy EVE Ecos as much as you can.